Configuring and deploying an operating system can take a lot of time and resources. That's why Red Hat Enterprise Linux provides built-in automation to help. My name is Brian Smith, and I'm a product manager at Red Hat. Today, I'm going to demo how the SSHD system role helps you implement consistent configuration across systems. RHEL system roles are a collection of supported Ansible roles that can help you automate and manage your RHEL environment, ensuring consistent and repeatable configuration. In today's video, I'll be focusing on the SSHD system role. This role can deploy your organization's preferred SSHD server configuration across your environment. It can also consistently set the owner, group, and permission settings for your SSHD configuration file as well. This role supports RHEL 8, RHEL 7, and RHEL 6 managed nodes. My demo environment consists of a RHEL 8 control node named controlnode.example.com, and I have a total of four managed nodes, two of which are RHEL 8 and two of which are RHEL 7. My desired SSHD configuration is having the SSHD config file set up with root and root as the owner and group, and the file permission set to 0600. I would also like to have the X11 forwarding, max auth tries, client alive interval, login grace time, allow TCP forwarding, permit root login, and max startup configuration options set in my SSHD configuration to the values you see here. However, as we often see in the real world, there are a couple of servers that have special requirements and need to deviate from the options I just outlined. On RHEL 7 Server 2, I would like all of the configuration I previously mentioned, except I need to have the X11 forwarding enabled and permit root login enabled. And likewise on RHEL 8 Server 1, again I need all of the configuration I previously mentioned, with the exception that I need to have permit root login enabled on this server. Now that I've outlined the demo environment and our desired configuration, let's get into the demo. I'm logged into my RHEL 8 control node where I have previously installed the RHEL system roles RPM and Ansible engine RPMs. I've also set up a service account named Ansible and SSH keys on the control node and manage nodes that I'll use in this demo. For more information on these steps, refer to the introduction to RHEL system roles blog post that is linked in the video description. Each role has a readme file that outlines the role variables that can be used. I'll start by looking at the readme file for the SSHD role, which is available at user shared doc rel system roles SSHD readme.md. If we scroll down here a little bit, we'll get to the section that covers the SSHD variable, which is a dictionary that can contain your desired SSHD configuration settings. I'll use this variable to specify the SSH options I would like to be set on the servers. The readme file also points out that simple variables that are named sshd underscore and then the name of the setting can be used to set specific configuration items and that these simple values override what is in the sshd dictionary variable. So I can use these simple variables for the special requirements I had on rel 7 server 2 and rel 8 server 1 which needed to have a couple of configuration settings deviate from the other servers. If I scroll down, the readme file also shows that the sshd config owner, sshd config group, and sshd config mode variables can control the owner group and permissions on the sshd config file. I can also scroll down and see some example playbooks that demonstrate how you can use the sshd system role. Let's take a look at the playbook file I'll be using which is named sshd.yaml. It is very short and simple because I'll be specifying the role variables in the inventory. In the playbook, I simply specify that it should apply to all host, that we should escalate to root privileges with the become true statement, and that I would like to use the sshd role. Next, I'll take a look at the inventory directory. Within this directory, I have a inventory.yaml file that lists out the five systems that I would like the sshd role to configure. I also have a group vars directory created with a file named all.yaml. The variables in this file will apply to all of the hosts in my inventory. In this file, I set the sshd config owner, group, and mode variables to specify the owner group and permissions on the sshd configuration file that I would like to have. I also set the sshd dictionary variable with the seven configuration items that I would like to have set. Under the host vars directory, I created YAML files for the rel7 server2 and rel8 server1 hosts to specify variables that apply to these individual hosts. For rel7 server2, I define simple variables which start with sshd underscore and then the name of the setting to fulfill the special requirement that the rel7 server2 deviate from our standard config and have x11 forwarding and permit root login both enabled. In the sshd role, these simple variables will override the settings in the dictionary variable that we specified for all hosts. 
Likewise, for the rel8 server one, I have a YAML file that sets the simple variable sshd underscore permit root login to yes to fulfill the special requirement that the rel8 server one have permit root login enabled. Before we run the playbook, let's take a look at how the systems are currently set up. The file permissions and group ownership on the files on our five servers is very inconsistent. As you can see, we have different group settings and different permissions on these files. I'll also check the sshd config file on each of these five systems and check the max authorize setting. And we can see that this is very inconsistent as well and has different settings on, on several of the hosts. I'll go ahead and run the playbook with the Ansible playbook command and specify my playbook file and also specify the minus I flag to indicate that I'd like to use the inventory directory as my Ansible inventory for this playbook run. The playbook will run through several tasks, including gathering facts from the host, ensuring that the SSH packages are installed on the host, checking the host keys, creating the configuration file, and finally reloading the SSHD service because the configuration file was changed. The playbook successfully completed, and I'll check the sshd config owner group and permissions on the servers using the same command I previously ran. And as you can see now, the settings are consistent and they match what I had specified in the role variables. Next, I'll validate on a couple of the servers that the configuration was properly applied. If we check the rel8 server2 and grep for the seven settings that I had specified in the sshd dictionary variable, you can see that they are all set to the proper values that I have specified in the variable. If we check on rel7 server2, we can see that the first five settings match what was in the sshd dictionary variable, and the bottom two variables are the ones that we used the file in the host virus directory for this server to override for the exceptions that were required specifically for this server. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you'd like to learn more about Red Hat Enterprise Linux, start your free trial today at redhat.com slash try rel.